You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I went into the adult industry and honestly, for three years, like, again, I was cutting off a part of myself. But it's so dark, babe. Like, I don't, I don't know how... Um, I mean, obviously, I do know now how I got through it, but there was a lot of drugs, do you know what I'm saying? Um, I always say that I sold a part of my soul because I really feel like I did. I've become um, this alias who was a sex object and I just fucking, I didn't care about myself. And this is why I have to do this because they, people don't understand how easy it is and instead of judging the stripper, instead of judging the homeless person, think about what the fuck they've been through and how they've got to where they are. And that's exactly what he did to them, babe. Like he'd, He would take their drugs and um, make them rattle to the point of where they were shitting themselves and stuff. And then they, he would be their saviour because he would give them the drugs. You know, and now I look back, <laughs> that was me, but with the coke, you know, like... And he'd just come and he'd, every weekend when I'd see him, I'd, you know, I did much as I didn't want to see him, he'd have my bag of coke. So I'd be like, thank you. Boom, we're on. And today's Ooh. guest, we've got Sammy Brown. How are we, Sammy? I'm so happy to be here, babe. I'm just really grateful that you've asked me to come on and we can talk about this that we're going to talk about today and hopefully raise some awareness that could prevent someone else from going through it. Yeah, you've been through some shit in your life. Um, mm. Survivor of human trafficking, survivor of satanic ritual abuse. Like, the that, that stuff that a lot of people don't think go on in this life, like... I didn't some, think went on, babe. Some madness goes on. You know this. I know mm-hmm. this. I've had people on speaking about it before, and yeah. it is scary to actually what goes on, and things seem to be getting worse. Mm-hmm. People speak out about it, and they kind of don't know. Things kind of people kind of twist things, and, yeah, and that's a scary be. thing. This is what nobody wants to talk about, but fuck it, we're here. Let's go for it. And uh, first of all, how are you? Yeah, no, I'm so, I'm so like, I, I guess I'm a bit anxious because like, my, my, my body always knows that I'm going back there mentally. But now every time I do one of these interviews, babe, I just know that it's stopping because I, I keep saying to people, these people have their power because we're not speaking about it. So every time that we shine the light on it, it's going to make less space for darkness and the darkness can't exist when we shine our light on I guess the darkest parts of this world because these things that I talk about, the reason that I do it the most is because I know that this happens to children. And I think that's what pains me the most is that to know that I was, I guess, a young girl, the fact that someone could be even more vulnerable than I was, I've got to do it for them, babe. Like this is this is what it's about for me now, like stopping it for the next generation. And all I know is that if it could have happened to me, could have happened to absolutely anyone. Yeah, it's so. scary to think, man, especially I've got kids myself and mm. it's scary that like, you don't know what's around the corner, you don't know who can be manipulating, you don't know who can be grooming who, like, we can all fall under some false pretense that like, people are okay and yes. I've learned that it took me 30 odd years to realise, no wonder I don't fucking trust anybody. Know, but babe. There's still good people out there, there's still, we're a working process, we're not all saints, we're not all angels, but no. if you can learn from your mistakes, learn from the pain of your past, you can then help people from their own trauma and their own pain, but it's difficult to then make changes, make sacrifices, but you've done that. So first of all, congratulations. Proud of you. (laughs) Always go back to the start of my guests. Yes. Get a bit more knowledge about you, how it all started. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go right back. From the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess with me and growing up, like I was brought up in a really loving home, like my mum and dad, like, um, I guess the only thing was it was dysfunctional between them two. Like me and my siblings, like we was given so much love. We had, you know, two birthdays, two Christmases, everything was, it was really given to us on a plate. You know, we had food in in the cupboards. We had holidays every year and we had two loving parents, but separate. And unfortunately, how they separated was through um, toxicity, um, domestic violence. And as much as me and my siblings never saw that, I think kids can pick up on things and I know that now more than ever working around kids and I guess I picked up on my world breaking apart like when I was around 10 and 11 
um, I kind of realised that this whole mum, dad, picketed fence, perfect Brady Bunch family, I wasn't getting it. And I guess that's where my world really started to deteriorate because I was mad, babe. Like, I was like, you know, you say you've got kids, like, I was an angry teenager, do you know what I mean? I was just going from primary school to secondary school, all hormones, but I was so mad at my mum and dad because I was like, why, why is this happening? Like, and I guess because they weren't um, talking to, to, to me and my siblings, like, they were more, I guess, um, I guess caught up in their toxicity. It was kind of like, you know, tell your dad this, tell your mum this. And I guess we, I was caught in the middle of that. And it wasn't just that, it was I was given a, um, a hidden responsibility to look after my younger sibling. And uh, I was so angry. I was like, why are you taking my childhood from me? I have to look after my younger sister. Like, like I want to go out, I want to be with my friends. And um, that's when I started being a bit of a rebel, I guess. And what were you? Uh, taking drugs, I started to smoke weed from a young age. I, um, I guess, I confused attention with love. Started to hang about with older boys. Uh, started to get sexually active. Um, telling my mum and dad, I guess, to do one. Um, staying out late, uh, lying to them. Um, said I was staying at friends, and really, I was out doing it all night or on the streets. And I guess this is why even more that I speak because the society that we live in today with young people, if that was happening in my day and age, then you just know that, you know, kids now, they're a lot susceptible to what's going on around them. And I guess we do live in a bit of a world where kids are taught to be little gangsters and prostitutes. And I was brought up with the Spice Girls, I was saying to you before, um, now it's a bit more scary with like things like Cardi B, Little Nas X, but I was, I was influenced, I guess, by a crowd and, even now, like, even as a young person, looking back, I'll take responsibility. Like, I chose to hang about with the people that I did. I chose to try and escape with the drugs, you know, and, and the weed and stuff. And uh, it was mad because in school, we were still, like, I guess we was a little bit naughty in my year. Uh, we went back at dinner time, started uh, drinking. Um, <laughs> I laugh about it because I guess the kids like who I went to school with are probably like Sam, shut up, man. Like, um, and because it was one of their houses that we used to go back to for dinner. Um, but I guess that's like all like kind of innocent stuff compared to like what was going to come. But even still, I was highly influenced and I wanted to be accepted. So I guess I was yeah, doing from things. the wrong reasons. But obviously, that's the start of. The madness because we always crave more then. Yeah, we babe. always want more and more. How old were we when us all started loving as well? Yeah, so it was 11 when mum, like 10, 11 when mum and dad split up. When I went to secondary school, that was it. I started to really um, become a rebel. And I, I, like I say, like I was, I was just, anyone who's got um, teenagers will know that, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, shut up mum, shut up dad. Like, don't tell me what to do. You can't even bloody like tell me what to do now so as a little kid and I guess like my mum and dad maybe they felt a sense of guilt like do you know what I mean and they they kind of was just like you know Sam's just being Sam but at the same time I wasn't telling them everything do you know what I mean like I what they didn't know what was going on they didn't know that I was going out and I was doing what I was doing and um they certainly didn't know that we was going back at dinner and drinking and stuff you know so um this is I guess where I always say I got put in front of the Wicked Witch of the West. And I walked down that path because when I was 16, I left school. Um, I actually was quite smart in school, but I was naughty. So I did get like seven A to C's, like, but I was like trying to wag school a lot. I think it was more a test of memory in school, wasn't it? So I was, I was good at remembering stuff. So um, I did quite well and then ended up going to sixth form to do psychology, sociology and philosophy. But at that point as well, I also got um, introduced to a lady um, who was considerably older than me, like about eight, nine years. And um, I was introduced to her by my school friends, 15, 16, and they had met her first. And um, she just seemed like a nice lady, you know what I mean? She was older, um, she was smoking weed, so like, I guess I was a bit like, ooh. And then she had her car, she was living at her friends at the time. Um, I, she seemed really cool, babe, I'm not gonna lie. Like I was I was a bit um, enthralled with her. When I met her, I was very like, oh, I like her. Like I wanna be a bit like her. 
God, if only I knew, you know. Um, but my my two friends, when we was there, uh, it was weird because, like, she disclosed herself as a stripper to us, but then she started to kind of give us dances and stuff, um, like showing us lap dances, showing us how it was done, getting her clothes out around us, her, her dancing clothes, and then I was like, what's that? So I guess I was like a intrigued 16-year-old girl, um, and... I was like, oh, can I try that on? And then she was like, oh, you look really nice in that. So I guess that was the start of it. And uh, my other friends dispersed and I stayed with her. And from that, when I stayed with her, I started to, I guess, get involved in her lifestyle. So um, she introduced me to armed robbers. She introduced me to, I guess, more of a gangster kind of lifestyle. Um, and then, you know, at 17, I was sniffing coke with her, going to parties with her, having the guys um, sniff lines off my ass. You know, I was told I had to say I was 18, you know. Um, and then it just started to get a little bit more, like, I guess, darker, because when I was 17, she disclosed herself as a, a prostitute to me, and... Um, I guess that was it then, I was in. I, I, I didn't know at the time, obviously, like because it took me a long time to understand about how this works, but grooming is um, a very slow process, you know? And it took her a good year for me to get into that position where I was having lines sniffed off my ass. And, you know, I thought that this stuff was normal, do you know what I mean? And I guess having the first line with this lady, I remember having it and, um, I remember the next day I was on a proper downer and I was like, oh, I want to, I want to die. Like, I, I want to kill myself. And I was, she, she just started laughing at me. I was like, Sam, don't worry. Like, everything's okay. You're just on a downer. So she was introducing me to this lifestyle. Do you know what I mean, babe? And I guess at 17 years old, I was working at Home Bargains, six pound, I think it was like six pound 50 an hour minimum wage at the time. And uh, she started showing me this life. And it, I'm not going to lie, babe, it was cool, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I was getting shown a life I'd never seen before. Um, getting attention. Yeah, and I also, like I said to you before, I'd already confused attention with love like from school. So I was already like sexually active, um, thinking that it was normal to, um, you know, just kind of act a certain way. And I noticed that if I acted a certain way around guys, then I would get what I wanted. Um, but this isn't, uh, this isn't the right way, babe. Like, you know, like this is where I feel like we have to talk about this because especially young girls, they need to know that we're worth more than that. Do you know what I mean? Like me personally, like I feel like we're not, why do we have to be seen as sexual objects? Do you know what I mean? Like why can't we be empowered and, and see ourselves as, as, as strong women that can make something like in their lives? Like I'm not saying that anyone in that industry isn't doing that. I just know that from being on both sides of the spectrum, I know what feels better. And um, at the time it might've felt normal, but I started to cut off a part of myself. Block it out. Yeah, massively, babe. And I guess the drugs as well, like taking the drugs, like massively influence that. And um, like, as we know, like Coke will give you dopamine. So you're like, whoa, like everything, you're on a massive high. And uh, that was when, when I was 17 and all this started happening. She then disclosed herself as a prostitute to me. And when that happened, um, she said to me about, oh, you won't judge me, will you? And obviously I'm not, like, I was her best friend. Like, I honestly worshipped the ground she walked on. And it was weird because she was a bit of a narcissist because she would always kind of control me a bit, you know, like, make sure you're there at that time, Sam. If she was outside my door and I was late, oh, my God, the, the, the kind of, like, reaction that she'd give me. I guess looking back now, I kind of understand it was kind of a control mechanism. Be here at that time, do what I tell you to do. And... Um, I was kind of just willingly doing it. I remember she used to be like, oh, I just take my top off in the car when we're on the motorway. So what did I do? Took off my top in the car on the motorway. So monkey see, monkey do. And I'm very aware now that the company that you keep, you actually mirror them. Um, we know in our brains we have mirror neurons, so what we see, we do. And I guess at that time, that's all I was doing was reflecting what I thought was normal. And to me, she was normal. But what wasn't normal was the fact that I thought it was okay to sell my body at 17 years old, um, unprotected, bareback up and down the country with this girl, thinking that 
it was okay to do that. I guess people need to understand as well, when you're under the age of 18, you're not actually like a prostitute, like um, you're being exploited because you're a minor. And uh, I don't know, babe, like nothing in my head thought that that wasn't right. I just was so like enthralled with this. And I guess when I got given the money, I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> you know, this is more than my EMA. <laughs> this is more than um, the money that I'm getting at home bargains. And uh, yeah, that was it then. That when it started spiraling. Yeah, massively, babe. Massively. Seventeen, man, fucking hell, that. But it just goes to show that what can be done, how how f- vulnerable uh, kids can be as well. To massively. But then I've had a woman called Barbara Heron, who's an amazing woman. She wrote the book called The Hospital. Okay. So when the paedophile rings and stuff, oh wow, they've got like a checklist. So in this hospital in Ashton Hall. They were drugging the kids, abusing the kids, experimenting on the kids and killing the kids. So what happens is they had a checklist. The doctors had a checklist for vulnerable kids, runaways, um, kids, broken homes, homes, all the usual shit. So what happens is they used to go into this hospital and then sign the kids off as crazy. So what happens is the kids were actually running away and escaping. But when they went to the police station, the police were just taking them back because it was in their report that they were crazy. So there's a checklist for people to then... Oh under my. grow and people are easily groomed because they've not got their mum or dads there. there. Was there any ever any telltale signs from your dad or your mum that my they mom know you were that, you, that they knew that you were fucking going down no, the hall? No, no, they never knew not feel like like that. tired or haggard or Babe, I'll be honest with you, at the start it wasn't like a, a, a full throttle thing, like everyday kind of thing. Like um it was a case of I was with this girl a lot, my mum and dad hated her. They were like, Why are you hanging about this lady? Like what are you doing? But what are you gonna tell a seventeen year old? kid babe do you know what I mean like I I was like do one (laughs) like don't tell me what to do like she's my best friend and she's an amazing person um and I backed her for till the day babe um did she ever force you to do anything or was it all from your free will you were just following her yeah I was I wasn't I was following her like that's what I'm saying like I was putting myself in such situations and I wasn't seeing the danger just because I was I was thinking it was normal because my best friend was doing it and looking back now, like, I'm like, what the hell were you doing, Sam? You know what I mean? Like, I got into cars with guys. Like, I didn't know that I could have been taken anywhere, you know? And um, I guess, like, what we're going to talk about later just shows, like, how these other cretins are there waiting for you. Like you said, like, there is people that are praying and they're waiting. And when you fall into a certain criteria, that's it, you know? Yeah, they're praying on the vulnerable in the week. Yeah, The babe. ones who can't think for themselves, the ones who can't see the bigger picture. It's took you a few years, but you've still learned and you've grown from it. This is where you can now help other people. And it's difficult because you won't listen to people who are close to you. I know. That that's the wrong person. That, like, oh, my mum my and dad used to, my dad always knew who the wrong ones were. And when I was a young kid, let's stay away from him, son. He's bad news. And time passes, man. They're either in for murder or they've been murdered. Yeah, and, or they're doing what they're doing. And you're thinking, fuck. I you never just listened don't listen. to my dad. I know, yeah. babe. I but know. But again, everybody, f- I was at that age as well. I thought I knew everything. I knew mm. fuck all. I'm still at that age. I still I know. think I know everything. <laughs> still learning, you know baby. I mean? I'm talking about this shit now, but somebody was to tell me I was doing something wrong. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? the irony I just, of it. I just don't make the same mistakes as what we did. As is frequently, which is the, the most important thing for change. Have you ever spoke to this girl? No, babe. So actually, so the thing is, not now. No, 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 no. no. But did you ever know her story, her backstory? No, this is the thing. To trigger her to do that as well. Exactly, and this because I want to go on to this later about that. This is a broken society. Like this is a hurt people that are continuing their cycles of abuse, hurting people. I mean, later on, I can like you know we'll find out. Like I didn't know certain things about her, like that she had a sister I didn't know about. Um, you know, and there was things like as we go on to the other part of my story. Um, there was things I found out about her I didn't know so I'll be honest with you there is a good chance that this because with my other perpetrator he was telling me that he had been born into this so what he was doing to me had happened to him and again I'm not justifying anything what's happened I'm just saying it makes sense for these cycles to continue because that's all that it is is just to hurt people hurting other people or doing what they think is the norm you know um, and again, like, I don't blame her. Like, I, I am here just to let people understand that uh, what can happen if you can choose a path in your life, you know, and you don't listen. And I guess deep down, like, I knew, I knew, like, what I was doing was wrong, but I wasn't, I guess I didn't have that self-worth, babe. And that's a sad thing because, like, 
I think about it now and I didn't care about myself. I didn't love myself. I didn't, I didn't care about what I was doing. And um, like when you're being groomed as well, like I always think to people like, because I've looked into like other things now, like it's very close to like domestic violence. Do you know what I mean? Like they'll befriend you first. So you don't really know what's going on because they, they are like your, I guess your knight in shining armor. They're there to be your best friend and um, your accomplice and stuff. And then, that's when they isolate you and that's what she did to me. Um, it was always, I was always with her. I was never at my house. Um, she stayed at my house once and made a very big comment that she never wanted to go back. It was dirty, do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't what she wanted around. Um, my mum never let her stay at, at my house, at her house um, for a reason. My mum didn't like her, you know? Um, and that when I guess the isolation happened, that's when I guess I was only listening to her more than anyone else, even more than myself, you know? How long were you with her for? Um, oh my God, so I was with her from 16, but then until I ended up meeting the man, the perpetrator, because she introduced me to him. At what age? So um, after I had been groomed, and I met my um, perpetrator at 21, the one that human trafficked me and was a Satanist and stuff. But um, obviously this lady as well, she got me a job on um, Babe Station. Um, I don't know, some of the guys might know who that, yeah, that no, is. Yeah, I Babe Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But like, some, sort of like, obviously I was a minor on that show. It was a show called what? Hotel Voya. Yeah, I know, babe. So she got me a job on this Hotel Voya. It's been closed down now, thank God, because if it hadn't, I would have made sure that it would have been and um, like exposed them for who they are the same way I'm doing now. But it was mad because they assumed because I was with her that I was above age. But then again, like they didn't ask me for any ID. They didn't ask me any questions like that. And I'm telling you now, babe, like in um, this babe station scene, this is where the drugs are. There's a lot of drugs around. There's a lot of abused people there. A lot of girls in that industry, you start to realize this is where the damage is, you know? And I think personally from being in the sex industry, I know that a lot of the, even the men and the women, like they've been through a shit, babe. Do you know what I'm saying? And I guess in that industry, you have to cut a part of yourself off, babe. And um, for, so when I was 17, I ended up getting into Babe Station, but then um, I also got into the adult industry. And when I was 18 years old, I took that plunge. She then again took me to my first shoot. And this is what happens as well, babe. So when you're an aspiring model, um, you know, there was things like uh, MySpace and Purple Port back in the day when I was um, like starting my career. And um, that was where a lot of the people try and find you as well. There's a lot of uh, people on there that are trying to exploit you and they will try and find you. Um, people who are pretending to be photographers, you know, and really just want in a little picture of you for their own little CD thing. Um, and everyone wanted to be that girl, do you know what I mean? Everyone wanted to be the Jordan, everyone wanted to be the page three girl, so anything that got you there, I guess you would do, you know? There was a, when I was in that industry, babe, like I went into the adult industry and honestly, for three years, like, again, I was cutting off a part of myself, but it's so dark, babe. Like, I don't, I don't know how, um, I mean, obviously, I do know now how I got through it, but there was a lot of drugs, do you know what I'm saying? Um, I always say that I sold a part of my soul because I really feel like I did. I've become um, this alias who was a sex object and I just fucking, I didn't care about myself. And, um, sorry, there was, um, thanks, babe. <laughs> I was looking at them. There was a lot of girls in the industry that, um, you know, were damaged, you know? There was a lot of domestic violence going on. So when I went on Babe Station, like, you know, a lot of the girls, like we, I was known for, for being one of the, the coke heads on, on the set and they'd take the mick out of me and we and another girl, um, we had nicknames and it was, it's just sad that it just become that normal. Do you know what I mean? Like even the producers were sniffing lines with us, babe. Do you know what I'm saying? So people need to realize about this stuff and, um, the adult industry, Jesus, like when I, when I think back now, James, like, I'm not going to lie to you, like, I, I, uh, I pushed my body to places, like, because I know now what, like, um, what love is, 
and and what consensual sex is. I don't think like I was um I didn't have any respect for my body. I was I was doing things because I felt I had to because if I didn't I wouldn't get the work, you know. But I guess when I got into the industry and when I was 18 it was mad because even then, babe, the, the the vultures, they were there waiting for you. And the first scene I ever did was it was with a company called Kilogram and there was a pimp in that in, in that company. Luckily, I didn't get pimped out by him. I probably would have preferred him because I found out later who the girls he was pimping. Um, and he wasn't as, um, he was a bit nicer than my pimp anyway. Um, but even still, that's what I'm saying, the, the, the type of people that are around that industry, do you know what I mean? And it was funny because the, the, um, the people who run Kilogram, they try and get you in and they're like, um, oh, you're going to be like a family to us, you know? They introduce you to their kids, like they, um, they, they start telling you that everyone bad minds them in, in the industry and, and it's because of what they do, babe. Like they, they are trying to push girls to levels, like to do for an extra 50 quid, yeah? And, and because that's the first company you go to, you don't know that you can end up getting grants for things. And the thing with the adult industry, babe, is when you have... Um, your first scenes, so say if you had um, like Jenna Jameson's first scene or something, you will end up then having a hell of money when she gets blown up, you know, and they know exactly what they were doing because it wasn't just me, they did it too, they did it to a lot of other girls as well. And then obviously as I get into the industry and start to get a bit more involved in it, I realise exactly what they were doing. But everyone was doing it. <laughs> I felt normal, this is why it's so scary for kids nowadays. Because of the, the things that they can see, we go back to your great grandfather. We see more images in one hour than they seen their whole life. So eighty percent of stuff that's on porn is abuse. Yes. So babe. people are watching abuse, rape scenes, sexual abuse scenes. Like people are watching it. And listen, I've watched porn for years. I watched porn. You fuck. You were a fucking porn star for years. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I, I I've got friends who are porn stars. That like, I know people who still watch porn. But what it does is grain, graze, gra it, it blackens the brain as well yeah, because babe. you're watching something that you think is a norm. That's why girls so get looked at objects, but so the guys as well. So it just fucks with the mindset. You've got, if you talk about the mirror image with the mirror neurons, in mirror our brain, neurons yeah. where you're seeing things and you're thinking it's normal. Britney Spears hit me baby one more time. Kids walking monkey about in hot pants do, now. Mate. So they're normalizing things with the brain. That's why it's always so important to try and have some knowledge of certain things that like I've just been blessed to have been interviewing people and speaking to people to get a bit of understanding yeah. of everything. I know porn stars, I've got great friends who are in the porn industry, we've, they've come on, we've had a laugh, but I can still see they're broken as well because it's the usual suspects, the broken homes, yes, stripper, yeah. drugs, exactly. escorting to fucking then going down, whatever, because you're darkening your frequency every time, every your time. energy hanging around with low, low vibrational people where it becomes numb, but you feel drained, so you're blocking it out all the time. With it's the not, drugs. yeah. So it's, it puts a blocker on it. But you've been blessed to have managed to come out and see the world differently. But the porn industry is crooked as fuck now. We've got right. Playboy. We've had fucking eleven, twelve year old girls Shields, on it. Brooke Shields, ten. Years ten. Years old. We've got the Sun newspaper with girls at fifteen Lindsay and sixteen. Dawn, McKenzie, so mate, it's sickening. It's, it's everywhere. But we're so blinded because we're so caught up in the rat race that we can't be open-minded to the, these things go on. A lot of people, when you talk about blocking out the pain, so does everybody else. Yeah. They block out. And uh, they use porn to do that yeah, as well, yeah, babe. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It, like, but it's, it's scientifically proven that if you watch porn, you're actually depressed. Yes, babe. And it, I, this is, I'm such a big geek now, babe, like on these things like neuroscience. Like ever since mm -hmm. like I'd had my brain controlled, I was like, hell to the no. Like I need to work out what is going on in our brains for us to be so susceptible to these things. And it's so true. Like it's, it's coming from a place of trauma because we haven't been able to deal with it. It was like broken homes like we haven't been able to deal with that dysfunction because of society telling us you've got to have a mum, you've got to have a dog, everything's perfect, a dad, a picketed fence. Like it's not like that. What about the kids that are getting raped by their dad? You think that like how are they meant to handle their shit? And I'm telling you, babe, like there's a lot of girls in that industry, a lot of homeless people that are in them predicaments, like because of their lives that they've had as children. And this is what we need to do. We need to protect the children. Like that's my message now is hashtag save our children, even though they're censoring it. Like I I am trying to get that message out there so that we stop this for the next generation. 
Cardi B, Little Nas X, look at where we're going. The young kids now, they're getting groomed on TikTok, Fortnite. Like, and I didn't have that, babe. Like, we had MSN in MySpace, yeah? And I shit you not, people were sending dick pics then. So you got to understand how they're working now. And this is why I have to do this because... They, people don't understand how easy it is and instead of judging the stripper instead of judging the homeless person think about what the fuck they've been through and how they've got to where they are um so yeah the adult industry babe like i need to let people understand i've seen rape like i have seen abuse i've seen fucking i remember like my first um scene where i was going to do um my first anal scene and um i was downstairs and there was a girl doing her scene. She'd just come back after a little while. About three or four guys, I think it was, battering her. And she was shitting herself everywhere, man. It was f- and they were laughing about it. There was, like, rabbit droppings on the floor again. Like, I'm just about to do my first scene, do you know what I mean? 19-year-old girl. And I literally shit myself babe I was like oh my god and it's not pretty you've got to do these things called enemas and do do uh, douches like where you've got to stick things up you to get it all out do you know what I mean like it's it's not very nice um and then you know the whole um violating um divine feminine energy you know like it's a sacred exchange babe you know what I mean like sex now like we know that it's a, a sexual exchange but then the way that it's so abusive, like it, it's mad. But anyway, I went to do my scene and I was so scared because I it's fucking pure white bed and all this. And I'm just like, oh my God, you know what I mean? The worst things are going through my head, babe. And um, I remember the guy who I was working with and it sounds weird, but he was like, can everyone leave the room? Because he was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm really nervous because it's my first one. And um, luckily he'd worked with girls that had done their first scenes like that before. And he was like, um, everyone leave the room. And he was just trying with me and I was in so much pain, babe. <laughs> and he was just like, don't worry, we'll sort it. And then the camera rolled and I'd, um, it was so painful that the guy asphyxiated me um, to the point of me passing out. I don't watch any of my stuff back, um, but I know I passed out on that scene. So he would have been fucking basically someone who was unconscious. And I remember coming back to after like, like, you know, coming back and I don't know how many minutes it was, but when I did come back, I remember looking at him and I was like, like this. And I was just like, whoa, do you know what I mean? But you can't, you can't stop. You just carry on with the scene. And I remember after like literally babe, like grabbing him and being like, thank you. Like, for fucking asphyxiating me I'm just like what the fuck because that's the kind of mindset you have babe you are thank you are thanking people for stopping you from pain and you're not realizing that you're in pain (laughs) and you're just kind of like diminishing yourself and pushing yourself more to levels and there's girls that will do bigger levels than you babe and if you don't do them levels you won't get booked do you know what I'm saying and it's sad because now it's like a cattle market one in one out, one in, one out. And you've only got to hear about the stories now. I think Jenna Jameson's the one that's been talking about, like, you know, the darker stuff that's what's going on in the adult industry. And let's face it, babe, like, it's covering up the dark web, which is where I don't even use that word, like, children and porn, that that doesn't go into the same sentence. It's child rape content, it's child explicit content. And then, what? I'm dressing up as a schoolgirl in a movie. I'm dressing up as someone's daughter in a movie. We are promoting paedophilia and incest, babe. Like, big, big facts. Like, we have to see it for what it is. Like, why? What We're like, oh, no, we are, you know, we're just, um, we're having fetishes. No, this is desensitising us, babe, massively. And it's like you said before about the brain. When you watch porn... Um, the 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 grey matter in your amygdala it, it increases so you, you become more stressed you become more anxious like so what are we doing like it, realistically it's an addiction in it like and I guess like what people need to realise is just like any addiction it's not healthy and that that industry babe is one of the most unhealthy industries I've ever been um, you know I've ever been in and I'm so glad that I was in it for the reason now that I can speak about it and just be like nah babe like let's face it if the money's there if the money wasn't there would you do it but it's the most watched thing on the internet plus it's free babe and it's so easy access and, and that's Netflix the scary thing for. you've got to look at the things 
we can't even fucking say the word or it'll get cut down. But we, there's words now that we censor straight away, pick up and it's flagged. But yet, all that shit's not censored. Do Peter Fear is not anybody? censored. Porn's not censored. People are just fucking, it's just a free throw. But people don't know this kind of stuff. The same as the men, they think they're in there to do a job. You're in there, you think you're in there to do a job. So it's the whole industry. It's the people who are producing it. It's the people who are making the content yeah, who are just throwing it out there. It's, they're all fucked in the head. Yeah, it's, babe, they it's are. It's not necessarily that they're bad people. That it's not necessarily that you were a bad person, but you, that's I a ba- worth, bad babe. thing. So that's not just you. That's the other people who can't really see it because their eyes aren't open to it. How long were you in that industry for, Sammy? Um, so I was there for three years, babe, and um, so pretty short then. But, yeah, but enough I, to fucking see it give you for some what it serious was. Trauma. The thing was, babe, like I was, um, I guess at the the high heights of it. You know, I was I was uh, flown around the world. I was guess I was in the top echelons, if you want to say it, of of the, the adult industry. Um, I was getting flown to private islands. I was staying behind the Hollywood sign. You know, I wasn't doing no low budget movies, babe. But even still, the pain was there. Do you know what I mean? I used to fucking stay up sniffing coke till 6 a.m. Like looking at people like Amy Winehouse thinking, oh, it's okay, this is my life. Like I used to be like telling people, I'm going to do this till I'm 50. I'm going to be one of them grandmas. Like, Jesus, mate, I'm not being funny, but you'll shit and sneeze if you end up being like that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like real talk, babe, there is a lot of damage. Um, When I went to LA, a lot of the girls were on um, Xanax, um, and Valium, you know what I mean, like to get through it, <clears throat> and and that just shows about it. And yeah, there is a lot of damage that's going on, and it's a very dark world. And um, for me now, the reason that we have to like tackle this is because again, the youngest person that's going online is seven years old. That's been documented. I've I met um I did an interview, and it was on the same interview as a man who was four, and he got shown bestiality porn. And I remember that movie going around when I was a kid of the the woman getting you know fucked by a horse, like and that was bestiality at, 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 in school, babe. This now is where we have to think, is this really worth our addiction to pass this on to the next generation? Because now we're having kids that have got the same addiction as us, but then they're 10, 11 years old. And if they're going to see that and then think that that's normal in a relationship, babe, then what's happening? We're just creating all of this. You're creating monsters, but then... Kids now, by the age of seven or eight, have already seen over 10,000 murders. I know, babe. Through like, it's computer scary. games, films, cartoons. Then you go as deep as Disney, where oh, it's babe. a little messages and stuff. Like, so you can you go, you can it. go right deep. No, I, know, I know a lot of shit, man. But again, I question myself: is it, is it true? Is it fake? Is it real? You don't, you just don't know. But it's still good to be knowledgeable in so many different things to give your input and understand. I try and look at every angle yeah. to try and make sense of it all. Like, I don't know all the answers just because I watch a few videos. It doesn't make me a fucking expert. Of course, but I go babe. with my gut feeling. I go with my soul. I try and detach away from the things that I know is damaging my soul or blurring my image or blurring my, my frequency. Yes, so yes. So I'm yes. trying to do the right things to then see the world clearer. Then my intuition becomes strong because I've got a very strong intuition. I see things. A lot of people might think it's fucking nuts. I'm nuts no. anyway. I'm still crazy. <laughs> I am. Like, yeah, we're babe. all still a little fucking loopy, but... I'm trying to do things the right reason. If you're conditioning, you look at all the Disney movies. Every every character that's in a Disney film has never been raised by a mum or dad. Yeah, baby. It's always a stepmom, a, a single mom, single dad, and the or an aunt, or an uncle. Well, that people they? are getting murdered. Remember, these cartoons are holding guns and knives, and people are getting murdered. Like, it doesn't the brain doesn't know what's real or what's fake, so the brain absorbs that. So if you're getting constantly fed that information, if you're getting constantly seeing that shit then it becomes a normalized so that's why it normalizes things and then when people do it like you doing that stuff it didn't you knew it was bad because there was something inside you telling you it was bad but you thought it was fucking normal yeah babe i just accepted that this was like kind of like the norm do you know what i mean and this is again like why we have to kind of like try and show people about these stories so they can unwire themselves before you know they may i just don't want someone to have to get that far into it you know if we give these kind of information obviously it's it's up to the person what to do with it but the more that we are able to have these conversations the more that the power of of that detrimental society is going to go. Do you know what I mean? Because people are aware. Like once you're aware of these things, like you can then make more of a conscious choice. We, it really is about lifting the consciousness of other people to see, like you be in control of your brain and be like, oh yeah, if you've seen that, know that you've seen it instead of it just going through you and then you're not realizing that you're actually acting that out. 
<clears throat> so yeah, babe, the adult industry. I won up. I won um, adult actress of the what of like of the adult actress of the year award. Um, it really was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Like, but it wasn't like it was like rock and roll and rocking yeah. about, mate. Do you know what I mean? I was like a rag doll, babe. And again, like because I know now who I am and I know my worth. I know that was all linked to not having any self worth, because I was seeing myself as um, an object and I was seeing myself as a commodity, um, and I wasn't listening to little Sam because all little Sam wanted was love and to be accepted, but I was getting it from the wrong people. And this is why it's so important that we know our worth because people have agendas and people in that industry, their agenda was just to get me out. Do you know what I mean? Make sure that they, they get me to the highest level they can and push me out there as much as they possibly can because what it sells, you know? So, uh, bloody hell, I wish, I, it, in my head now, I wish I would have bloody stayed in that industry because obviously like what come next, that was the worst for me, baby. Like, I didn't even know that stuff like this existed. You know, we're all aware of like the adult industry and we're all aware of grooming and stuff like that. But the the thing I'm gonna go on to next, like I just didn't think was real. I didn't know that people like this were real. I didn't know. I thought like, you know, you hear conspiracy, you hear about um, satanic ritual abuse and you just think fucking hell, like what is that? Like no one really knows and I didn't know either. But lo and behold, anyway, when I was 21, um, this girl I was still uh, best friends with, and um, she had um, got introduced to this man. She had found, so basically there's a site called Adult Work, um, and this is a site where escorts and people do webcamming and stuff like that. And she was on that, and she went on there, um, and she had met this man. And this man introduced himself to her like as a savior, you know, a gangster, someone who was gonna be able to give her the dreams that she wanted. And she wanted to be a madam. So he promised her that as long as she started to bring on girls. So he was taking her money, um, but not all of her money, but um, you know, was saying, this is gonna go towards your escort agency, rah 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 So, uh, she was trying to get me involved with this guy, and at first I was like, nah, mate, leave it out. Don't want nothing to do with him, he's a weirdo. Um, she was telling me about him, and I, I just, it was straight away, like I was like, no, but she persisted. And she had an influence on me, babe. And um, I remember getting back from Vegas, 21st birthday, um, just after, and we got back. And uh, this is when I met um, Stephen McAllister, I know, uh, fucking hell, babe. <laughs> the evil, the evil. I never knew evil like this existed. But anyway, when I met him, I was introduced to him as the man, you know, the guy that was gonna give us all of our dreams and all this kind of jazz. And um, he had been prepped for me. He knew about my family. He knew about my coke addiction. He knew about the job and everything. He just knew everything, babe. And he was fucking savvy as fuck. He was smart. He was, um, he was just so like, when I met him, he just made out he was such a nice person and he just wanted to help me and my family. He wanted to make sure that I was able to give my family um, cause I was always like, oh, I wanna make sure, you know, that I can retire my dad and all this. And he was like, I'll make sure that happens, Sam. I'll look after you. You can be my woman and all this and then started chatting shit saying oh my women you know they're all in my bay or I look after them and you know I've got this house and if you want to be my woman you're just gonna have to do what I say and this was when you know it started obviously he brought a bag of coke had me there and um it wasn't straight away babe like at first he was like a gentleman it was really nice to me he was like I guess my friend and he was trying to um tell me about this girl Becky and how that she had been um she had set me up he was trying to make out that she had set me up and um not only that she was she wasn't who I thought she was so this is like I said to you before I'd found out things about her so I'd found out she had a sister I found out she was paying her bills from a bank account didn't know but it was funny because she always used to call me nice but dim and then I realized why she used to call me that 
because she was getting away with buying my own birthday present from me with my own bank account. And um, that was when my loyalty, I guess, went from Becky to Steve. And it's the same process. They use the same process. These these human traffickers, they they honeypot you, yeah? So they'll like get you and they'll, they'll promise you the world. Um, some of them be, uh, boyfriend the girls, you know, and stuff like that. And it's the same tactic. Like they, they, um, they befriend you and then they isolate you. So once my loyalty had gone from Becky to Steve, it was quite easy then to... Uh, Manipulate. Oh yeah, but I was manipulated anyway. Like I was, I was, I was like totally like this guy's going to save my life. Like, do you know what I mean? At the time, I just wanted to have an out of the industry, and I was telling him about like how the industry had like kind of screwed me over a bit and how like toxic it was. And he was like, "Oh, you know, why don't we make this production company?" And I was like, "Oh my god, like this is an amazing idea. Like this is something that that I can help the girls then to show how to make their own money. Do you know what I mean? Like what I'd said to you before, like get your own website." do your own stuff you know what I mean and all that kind of stuff and that was my dream that was sold to me and I bought I fucking bought it mate I bought it what was it you would do for him what what was I to do for him oh what did I have to do I had to get targets like girls no targets I had to get money for him so I had to get um like basically it started off with like two grand a week so <clears throat> it was a case of I had to lie on my back and get the money for him but I didn't I didn't know because I obviously I was seeing myself as a sex object anyway I didn't realize I was guess was being trafficked I didn't realize like me handing over I thought I was giving my money for the production company you know but it was so real because he he took me to places and um, we we went to have a meeting with the daily sport um he took me to places where we was gonna you know we were gonna rent out this room to shoot we had leaflets made babe leaflets like and it was like it was all really happening and then um, basically I wasn't allowed to ask questions. And if I ever lied, he said, if, I ever, if you ever lie and I find out that's when trouble will happen. And I guess I was lying anyway. I didn't want to be there. Do you know what I mean? And he was like, kept asking me, oh, do you want to be here with me? And it was, it was a slow process because it was a kind of like maybe an overnight, you know, like sniffing for a full night and then getting information out of me. Um, maybe a little slap because I didn't sort him out because he would always be like, you have to sort me out. And I guess, again, thinking that this was normal to do um, and he was my man and I had to do, you know, what he said. But there was a time when I said I didn't want to do it, you know, and that was when a bit of the slaps come. But... I guess my mind was already weak, babe. Like, I was already, like, from the ages of 16, I'd already been manipulated, do you know what I mean? I was already in this industry. I was already driven by drugs. So it's funny because he used to take the piss and laugh and be like, it was so easy to get you. Um, but I guess the whole process in itself, it was kind of when he took me away from Becky and... Um, it was about six months, I guess, into it when things just started to get weird, babe. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't a case of just being pimped out. It was a case of um, he started saying weird stuff about um, like the Illuminati. He started asking me questions, being like, do you know who they are? But at the time, it's over my head. Like, do you know what I mean? I was just like making sure I was getting the money for him because it was the targets. So about six months, he was like, oh, um, do you know about the Illuminati? At the time, I had gone to um, Ireland. So when I went to Ireland, I met this this man. Now, apparently, Steve had set up this man, yeah. And um, I ended up getting a bit of feelings for him. And I had told a lie about him so that I could go and see him again. And that was when, uh, I guess, I was in trouble because I lied. And then... Um, you know, he had my, my parents' address and that was when it was kind of like, I'm going to kill your family, you know, and I'm part of this Illuminati. And I was just like, I don't know what that is. Do you know what I mean? I was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. But then um, the nights got longer and then um, the rape started happening um, and it was like more constant. 
you know? And it was, it was weird because it was all like in the name, he used to say that he was Lucifer. He said he was the devil. And then he just started saying all of this weird stuff, like, like that he had been born into a cult. Like we were saying before, like, the, I, I, see, I don't know how true this is, babe, but from what he was doing, like, it genuinely, I, I can't imagine anyone being taught, apart from being taught behaviour like that, because, like, even though I was brought up in a broken home, like, I never knew about stuff like this, babe, do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know about um, uh, sleep-depriving people and mind-controlling people. Like, um, there was just very weird stuff that he'd used to do, um, like, speaking in tongue around me and stuff. But this was when, like, other girls would start to come, do you know what I mean? Like, he would he would have a set way of doing things. And this was when, obviously, I was the broken girl. I was there, and he was always introducing me as his manager to people. And honestly, babe, like, I was just like, yeah, he's my manager, he's here to help us, he's here to do all the good and stuff like that. And these girls, they were so fucking more smarter than I was. Like, they, they had been, they, you know, they would stay for a little while and then they'd go. But I fucking stayed every time, babe. And I, I stayed to people, like, I genuinely thought that if I, if I was to go, then my family would get killed. But it wasn't only that, babe. Like, I was scared for myself. Like, I was... I was getting this done to me on a, on a weekly basis. Do you know what I mean? So basically I'd go away, I'd work, I'd work, I'd get the target and I'd come back. And honestly, babe, like seeing him was the worst. I never wanted to see him. Ever think about killing him? The weirdest thing was he actually put a knife to um, me one time and then switched the knife around and was like, come on, do it. <laughs> I couldn't fucking do it. Is that the Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah, really was, babe. Mm-hmm. I literally thought, I used to be like, even when I met my missus, I was like, this man's my best friend. He's there to look after me. I even was telling her, like, he's a good person. And literally, this is why it's so sad, because people always be like, oh, why didn't you just walk away? Like, how can you say that to anyone who's in an abusive situation they don't know about what you feel like when you're there like you get broken down babe this man used to piss in my mouth and used to fucking rape me and you know he he was sick in the head babe like so basically as well like like i say he was weird like after like six months like he started like really talking about weird stuff like um like paedophilia a lot and um incest and like um like um bestiality like he used to always like talk about it like it was fucking normal babe do you know what i mean like trying to um, like Normalize i don't know it for you. yeah this is what i'm saying and obviously at the time like honestly like you can my ex-boyfriends they're fucking like probably twice the size as you do you know what i mean they got no neck like mm. there was no way in the hell like he could have fucking put that in me even if he tried like but it was the whole process of it babe like there was um he, he, he never said that straight away do you know what i mean it was kind of like slowly slowly and that's what that's what these people do it's 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 a slow process do you know what i mean like they don't just come in and just slap you up some some people get taken of course they do and then they get jacked up on heroin and and, and put put away somewhere but these these people they're master manipulators babe and and these human traffickers they are so like the way that i can explain them i always say it's like an evil darren brown because he was fucking smart babe. where was he from um uh, he was actually well he used to say that he was from scotland what? Yeah, babe. Is it Scottish? Do you, remember, do you know um there was a guy who was on your show, yeah? And this is how this is how he had me, babe. This is how scared I was to question anything. There was a guy, and I, I think I messaged you, Paul Ferris. Yeah. He used to say it was him. Like and he'd had reconstructive yeah, surgery, that, yeah. like and literally like so obviously like when you look up this guy, this guy's a fucking gangster, do you know what I'm saying? Like he is a proper gangster. Yeah. And this is the audacity of it. Like he used to go around saying, Yeah, but he also said at the start when I first met him that um he'd killed his son. And that um, the reason that he killed his son was because um, he grasped on the police to him. Um, so it was planting seeds. So it's just fear tactics. Yeah, but babe. But that it, when you read up that, they're the elite, they're the ones who control the world. Exactly. Not some fucking fat squib from wherever, 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 wherever he's, he's from, from to Birmingham. them. Well, that, we went to Birmingham, innit? You know what I mean? Like, but the, that's just the fear tactics. That, he just sounds psychotic. He where is, babe. He's a full-on psycho. A, like, and how did it end up coming... That he got the jail. So after the three years, so this is what I'm saying. So it was a long three years, babe. Like, yeah. pro, like I, I, 
I I don't even think in my head I ever thought I thought that was my life. Do you know what I'm saying? But there was um How old's this man? He's um, must be like nearly fifty. He's on the he's on he's on he's on um the internet for people to look up because he obviously got branded the evil pimp of Birmingham, um mm. because obviously it wasn't just me. There was a minor involved. Um, there was obviously other girls that were involved. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's directly arrested because of me and the minor. I actually had a pimp on man, but it seemed more glorified. But when I told you story, people's are so engrossed with the story. He's got girls who work for him on the webcam, but he's got private planes. Does all that shit. There's not really much of a difference, and he's wanting somebody. To, to do a story, I want him to sit with somebody to do a story, but I'd like you to sit with him you and think? do the story because he thinks it's normal. He's it's got so the sick. girls, he says they can leave whenever they want, though. But part of me doesn't really believe that as well because the girls who do that are I don't know like, how he is, very like how vulnerable. I don't listen, there's pimps out there. I don't know every fucking pimp, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'd imagine it'd be okay ones. Yeah, they because like I said to you, that other guy from uh -huh. Kilogram, like Don Rubles, like yeah. he was still like he was still giving girls half of their money. Like, babe, I was made to give like five grand a week sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like, I had one of the girls pimping me out and I thought it was her because he was beating the shit and raping her. And then she was doing it to me and I didn't know. And I was blaming her. And then she was blaming me, saying, oh, you you got me involved. <laughs> like, it's fucking sick. How many girls were there with him? So through when I was there, there was must have been at least 30 girls, but... <clears throat> what? But, but that went and gone. Were they all through going the through the time. same process that you were going through? Or were you No, the this worst? was the thing. So with me, like, I, I don't know what it was with me. Um, but also the minor as well. Like, he was evil. Like, But he was evil to everyone. But when they start, he started getting evil, the worst, the worst people, babe, were the homeless girls. What do you mean? Like when he used to bring them in off the streets and he used to, he used to like control them with their drugs. So we used to make them rattle first. And I, I, uh, my first ever uh, girlfriend was a heroin addict. And you know, I, I used to um, get her stuff because I never wanted her to be in pain because obviously like, if people don't realize like with heroin, it can, um, it, you know, it goes into your full body system, you know, and when you don't have it, it breaks you down. And that's exactly what he did to them, babe. Like he'd, he would take their drugs and um, make them rattle to the point of where they were shitting themselves and stuff. And then they, he would be their savior because he would give them the drugs, you know? And now I look back, <laughs> that was me, but with the coke, you know, like, and he'd just come and he'd, every weekend when I'd see him, I'd, uh, you know, I did much as I didn't want to see him, he'd have my bag of coke. <laughs> so I'd be like, thank you. And it's fucking sad because, you know, people be sit there like junkie and they judge people. And they don't have a clue, man. These girls, these girls off the street, James, have had the worst lives. I remember one of the girls, bless her, she was so sweet. And, you know, she was even so sweet. Like one of the punters gave her a makeup box and she wanted to give it to me. And she was like, look, and I was like, babe, I don't want that. <laughs> like, you know, it's tacky. She's like, oh, but it's nice. He tried to help us. And she still had that sweet part of her, you know. And um, like he was just so evil to her. Like you know, he just used to call them scum, babe. Like, and he this was the thing as well. Like he had a type, so it was like obviously vulnerable always. But there were young girls, um, or they were homeless girls, or single mums. And this is what I want to go on to because it was one of the single mums that kind of broke um, the seal for me. Opened your eyes. Yeah. So she was really big. Um, she was really big into God, and um, she she wasn't, as I say, religious in regards to like, you know, um, I guess like hardcore religious. But she believed in God, and she had the Bible. And I guess when um, she came, it was mad because she came through adult work. It was through him, um, through adult work, because that's how we got a lot of his girls through adult work, getting him there. And um, the whole thing was there. Sat down. Oh, it's the manager. The manager. And. Um, at this point, I'd um, I'd been branded. I'm literally getting this taken off now, but with the 666 on my finger. Um, and she was there, and I've had this conversation with her, and she said, yes, yeah, Sam, she went, the only reason I stayed was because of you, because she actually knew about things like the Illuminati and cults and stuff like that. And when he started um, saying he was the devil and stuff, that's when she was like, okay, I know I need to stay. And it was weird. Like she had three girls of her own, do you know what I mean? And she was, she was just adamant that she had to stay. And um, I guess like she was like a bit of my savior because she 
was the first person to tell me what he was saying to her because everyone else, we never were allowed to communicate. He was very smart. He would put one girl in a room, speak to them, take the other one out and you weren't allowed to talk. And then the whole blame tactic of each other, you know. But she was the first person to tell me what he was saying. And it was mad. Like I was then, I guess, started to think what he was saying to me wasn't what he was saying to her. And I kind of, I guess I was kind of starting to think for myself, like as opposed to being a mind control puppet who was, you know, bitch do as you say, because that's exactly who I was, babe. I was a dog on a lead, you know what I mean? He said, jump, I said, how high? Um, was your mum and dad at this time? So this was the thing, like I used to go back home, babe. Like I used to literally go back home. And they knew, they didn't know. And this was the worst part. I used to, I remember going back at Christmas once and it was off my fucking face, babe. Like literally, and my dad's so innocent. Like he doesn't know about like coke and stuff. And I remember I wasn't eating. And he was like, he was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, no, I'm fine. And I would just be sniffing in the toilet at Christmas. <laughs> Going back, but babe, I was so scared. Do you know what I mean? So whenever I went back, I would put on them a big front because I never, I, I just, I knew he will, he said, I knew what would happen if I, if I ever did anything wrong. I mean, even if I wasn't doing anything wrong, I didn't even want to chance it, babe. Do you know what I mean? Like of doing anything to step out of line. But, um, I knew that he had their addresses and every time, like, I just, I remember, you know, there was weird stuff that would happen as well, because obviously, you know, when he told us we were, he was the Illuminati, some mad thing happened on my TV and everything, like, and that's when I was like, who is this man? Do you know what I mean? Like a message come up on TV, but I've looked into it now in Comedy Central, apparently this happens, like they'll put subliminal messages up, but he know, like anyone could say that they were part of the Illuminati, babe, because you can look up all this stuff, but he really was using like weird, um, like, you know, techniques and stuff like that with, our, with, our, with us to- like what? Like, so he would try and disassociate our brains. So like- um, The left and right side. Yeah, so that we had zero emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would, like I said, the whole tongue thing. Um, and then like, just like just do you do. think he's been that fucking psychotic though that he's tried to learn that to yeah then manipulate that. people and watching videos to then educate himself how to it's manipulate that, the masses it could be that but, but he also used to say that his mum was a prostitute like and that he was um like rented out as a kid and stuff like that and i think you've got to take everything that he says is a fucking pinch of salt though you don't this know is what's what i'm real, saying but, Babe, honestly, like when we went to court, like he had a high rise, yeah, Sick lived in a high man. rise. He had kids, babe, and he had a missus. And I, this is what I'm saying, like, was he leading a double life? Were these kids okay? Like, I, I still don't know to this day, obviously, yeah. like so about it. It was in court, and the, his kids and his kids were in court. So I was, but I, I don't know if his kids were there. I know his missus was there though, because my dad's seen his know. wife. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know if it was his wife, but it was his missus. But anyway, the woman, anyway, like she was like, I guess my my savior. Mm-hmm. She was the first person that made me start to. Um, uh, understand that there was something not right because he was saying one thing to her and then saying one thing to me but I was then realising for once we were being played off each other and I never knew that before so things started to click in my head about what if all the other girls were you know what if everything that had happened with us like all the other girls like that it wasn't like it was him the whole time doing his little puppet shit because that's what he used to do man he just like little puppeteer like thinking he was fucking smart and shit um when really you just would pick on, on, on vulnerable, weak people and that's all these people are, babe, and that's why we because have to they're weak themselves. Exactly. Because they're weak themselves. They're bullies. Yeah. They will never pick on, a, you know, a big man, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they'll never do stuff like that um, and that's exactly why I'm not scared anymore because I know that, like, all he is is a bully. Um, and um, so when she started to speak to me and stuff, he basically, um, he banished her and was like, she has to go and you can't speak to her. And I guess that was the first time that I uh, disobeyed him. Um, he didn't know, obviously. And I was still like having communication with her because I really, um, I loved her daughters. Like her daughters were um, like a really big part of, um, a positive part of my life at that time. Like they were helping me to, I guess, feel a bit more normal. Um, and uh it was mad because um, I ended up like going out for my birthday one year. Like I was allowed out for my birthday and I went out with that lady. Um, and that was when I met uh, 
Mara, who I'm with now. And I cry every time because it's just... Why? Because it's just so relieving that I fucking got saved. I just love her so much and I'm so grateful that I got given a chance, you know? I got given a chance, babe. And um, when I went out for my birthday... And, um, oh, God, I just look at pictures of me now, the state of me. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but it was sad because, obviously, like, I was very skinny. Yeah. I was drawn in, you know. But I just looked bad at me. So I was just, like, so mad that she fell in love with me um, in that state. And even to this day, she just said, Sam, I'm just seeing it in you. You were so beautiful. <laughs> And I guess it was hard for me because I didn't see myself as that. I'd never, ever seen myself as beautiful. Even to this day, I try, like, you know, to see myself in the best light. But fucking hell, did I fuck then? I didn't have a clue, mate. You know, um, and this was really um, the start of the breaking for me. So at first it was kind of like um, he knew there was, he couldn't get her. How's he going to pimp out her? Like she was working at Mackey's, she was going for a first good class degree at, um, um, in her university. And um, yeah, what, what, how is how, Did she like, know what you were doing? So When did I, you drop all that shit on her? This was the thing, she knew that I was going away and I was working, but she thought that it was... Um, because he was um, my manager, you know what I mean? I introduced him again mm -hmm. as the manager and I had to give him money. Were you, not, were you not scared to introduce her though in case he manipulated her? But this was the thing though, babe, like I had to, I never had a private life. Like I had to, whoever was around me. And the mad thing was, was when I um, went out, first it was her best friend that I met. So her best friend ended up coming to stay with me. And then she met Steve, this girl. And uh, this girl got manipulated by him massively. Um, but she also took money off me as well, this girl. And obviously, like, at the time, um, I just was going along with it. She was the security, Mara's best friend was. Um, but after, I guess, a month or something of this happening, um, Mara had split up with her girlfriend at the time. And then <laughs> she come round. And um, I guess it just happened naturally that... Um, we fell in love and that was when he started saying like, and it, this was a thing, babe, like it wasn't a case of me introducing her. She was already uh, in the circle of me, this girl, you know, cause the, her best friend was at my house. And um, it just naturally happened, you know, like, because he was there anyway, like always there. He, I was, I was his property, he said. So he had to know where I was and what I was doing. But um, it was mad because when he realised that someone, I guess, loved me, uh, he then started to play the good guy, you know. He was always playing the good guy in front of Mara anyway. He never did anything, like, bad in front of her, you know, always making sure he was coming out like he was a good man and he was looking after me and everything I was saying was backing that up because I was like, he's protecting me. When really, I only needed protecting from him, really, you know. Um... But that was when he said, we can stop you from brassing now. So it was really, he made it really cute. Said on Valentine's Day, you know, you can stop brassing now, Sam, because, you know, you've got this missus and let's just get money from webcam. So instead of being um, trafficked by um, a bit of sex, I was being made to give money through webcam. And I wasn't made to see him. And I also got left with a five grand Coke bill um, as well. So I was in a bit of a pickle, like kind of thing financially, but to go, he said to me, instead of giving me, you know, two, three grand a week, just give me two grand a month. Mate, I nearly bit off his hand, babe. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't have to see him. I give him two grand a month and I get to be with this girl who was just fucking amazing, you know? I thought, fucking hell, this is great. This is obviously still a shit deal, but again, I didn't know my worth. I didn't know what was going on. And... I guess the more time I spent around Mara, the more that it got, um, I could think for myself. The mind control stopped. The abuse had stopped. I didn't have to fucking see him anymore. And that was when Mara started asking questions. Because before I was like, don't ask any questions, babe, because obviously I was just reiterating mm -hmm. what he had said to me. But the more I spent time with her, she was like, Sam, and obviously, because even though it's two grand a month, it might not seem a lot, 
with webcam, like, because I wanted my normal life, I still had my drug addiction, do you know what I mean? The money wasn't coming in as much as it would have if, as if I was brassing. So I guess money started to go down. I was having to pay everything. Her best friend was basically living in my house rent free. You know, I was paying for her and also paying for her food. And I guess things just started to get a little bit hard financially, like, you know, um, a bit of pressure. And that's when Mara said, she was like, why are you giving him money? And I, I was like, she went, it, it's for, you know, what? Like, and I was like, oh, it's just for protection, babe. Like, just to make sure that I'm okay. What do you need protecting from, Sam? And I was like, I don't know. And that was when I just started to think, like, what do I need protection for? Like, what is, what is, I guess I just started to think, like, what am I doing? Why am I giving this man money? Do you know what I mean? Like, what's that about? And that's when I asked the question. And I still remember to this day, like, literally walking out of my room, like, and the couch in the front room, and I was pacing up and down, and I was never allowed to call him. I had to call Pete, who was our driver, to then call Steve. And honestly, I'm not even joking, babe. Within minutes, this man called me because he knew I had never stepped out of line before. Like, do you know what I mean? I was a bitch that knew her place. So when I got the phone, when he got the phone call, um... I asked him, I was like, why, why, why is this, um, why am I giving you money, basically, and what is, what is this whole situation now? And he just said, let's call it quits. These were his words, let's call it quits. And I panicked and was like, no, 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 if you're going to hurt my family, because I was like thinking this is some sick joke, do you know what I mean? I know how twisted he can be, like, I just don't want any repercussions for my family. And he was like, no, he was like, I promise you, and then he ended it on this is why I I truly think what you're saying is right baby he's a psycho he's a psychopath and this is another reason why I have to tell this story because he's walking the streets now like and this man's like this is walking around like people need to be aware that there's actual perpetrators like this but he was like no no it's this is it this is the end and he was like I did everything for you so obviously with the Illuminati they think they run everything don't they they run the world and he made everything happen for my good you know um and this was honestly the weirdest part because after, it must have been about two, three weeks later, the police got in touch with me. But what had happened was the miner had started a police inquest a year and a half before. And she had been going through the whole, um, with the police, trying to, you know, saying, oh, there's a girl there. We need to go and get her. Um, this is where he is. And she had had a right ordeal, babe. Like she had a police lady that didn't um, believe her. How old was she? Um, the the young girl, so the, she was actually the minor, How old? like so she was seventeen at, at the time. But she had got away. She was there for like a year and a half. So when she went to the police, she was just like just over eighteen. So um, when she had gone to the police, it was sad, babe. Like, the, like honestly, like is that why he's let you go so easy because he was at the, under a police investigation? Though? No, because this is the thing he didn't know, babe. Oh, did they not? He didn't have a fucking clue, babe. He didn't know. You like, sure? No. But because they let you go and. The mass manipulation, just as easy as that, then he must have known something. Do you think? A million percent, man. Mass manipulation telling you what to do, taking money off you to then go and just call it quits, try to end it on a good note because he's not wanting you to then go and say go something. against him as well. But I never, th- I never thought of it like that. But I, th- I think um, with the whole like <clears throat> police inquest, like he's already sure. now. He's now. Million percent, you know. Really, because oh, yeah, surely, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. because the thing was, though, babe, like, mm. if he would have kept me, like, there was a good chance that I would have had his back. But it, like, and then they, I'd, these like, mass manipulators aren't daft, though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's not daft. Maybe. He's probably seen you with that girl happy and seen different with you. So obviously the tables were turned. But you wouldn't be able to be as manipulated as the mm. way you would have been when you were doing when you were in your darkness. Maybe. Well, do you know what, Leah, babe? If he did, then I hope he was sweating from day. Like, honestly, yeah. like, because pig needed to sweat, mate. Because, um, so when, when the when the police card come, obviously, from what I told you, I thought it was him setting me up, babe. So I'm like, mate, I ain't having none of that. He killed his son. I don't want to be involved in this. Yeah. Um, and then the minor got in touch with me and she was like, Sam, it's me. Please, please come forward. Like, I have been trying so hard. And I just fucking knew I had to do it, James. Like, I had to fucking put my big girl pants on. Do you know what I mean? And I, I rounded a few girls as well. So um, Mara come, but then I got a few girls that he'd also um, 
uh, pimped out and done um one of my one of my best friends ended up coming because that's what I'm saying like people who were really close to me my best friend got involved in all this and everything like he took 12 grand off her you know I worked out babe like from do you blame yourself for that I try not to I, I still deal with a lot of um, regret yeah massively yeah and I think we all do from our mistakes in life, you know. Is that why you're trying to do the good in life? To yeah, try and replace babe, it from the bad? Babe, listen, like every day now I wake up knowing it's like if I can stop one person from going through it, then at least I've tried, you know. And at least I've, I've, I've put some good to this because it's fucking horrific. No one deserves to go through it. And there's young girls out there and boys that are going through this. And I just think uh, hopefully this is going to raise awareness, but it'll do a snowball effect of other people stepping up. And realizing that these people are in our schools, these people like the guy was trying to make a charity, babe, with our money, uh, and he was in he, like what? So when the um, court case started um, and the police inquest and stuff, um, <coughs> like I say, like the um, bless the lady, um, the young lady, like she had faced adversity with the police. They didn't um, treat her in the best way, and. Um, when I went forward, it still took a bit of a while, you know what I mean, like to get there um, to the, the court case. And then when we got there, that's when a lot of things come out, you know, like we didn't know that he had kids. We didn't know that he, he had a, a missus and he lived in a high rise in Birmingham. And then obviously when he got sent down, that's when the papers outed that he was trying to start a charity. He, he was actually going into charities. Then on the, um, it's, it, it's, do you know what's the maddest thing? Like, so when um, the articles come out about him, all of these uh, women were um, going on, is that the one that pushed you down the stairs? Is that the one that did this to you? Like, and I'm like, whoa, this man has been like, obviously he's a, he's a tyrant to society anyway, like, but he has been doing this for years, babe. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That's like, why it's important for people to come forward. But why the fuck is he staying in a high rise if he's taking in thousands per month? What the fuck was he? Exactly. Listen, so this is another thing. So this, uh, what th I believe massively in karma, yeah? What, one of my side hustles now is that I'm, um, I'm a professional masseuse for poker players, yeah? For, for um, private poker players. So it's like kind of like Vegas, you know, like when they're playing, um, you massage them. He was fucking gambling with our money, babe. So basically, like, I know now some of the guys that he used to play poker with. So it wasn't only that. Obviously, he was taking drugs as well. But I, this is the thing, babe, because we don't know too much about him. So the driver, Pete, he ended up getting off and run, doing a run to Thailand because I guess if he would have been involved in the court case, there might have... I don't know if other things would have come up. I don't know who this well, man's part linked of, to. If he's driving kids about, if he's driving girls about, then it's a conspiracy as well. I know, babe, you know exactly. I mean? But again, he's probably manipulated just like you would have probably been bringing girls in as yes. well. So even though you were groomed, you would have probably been saying to people, this is an amazing job, this is great, the porn industry is great at that time because you were trying to convince yourself yeah, that it was. So if he's fucked off, then he's obviously knows... He something so he's the, something something yeah. Pete knows and obviously like as well because of me working with the um, job I do now um was my little side hustle like these these poker players they tell me all sorts about him and they're saying that he was a fucking bully like in there as well like he used to be in the Broadway in in Birmingham like literally playing there they they even knew Pete as well and they were the ones that told me that he got off to Thailand so I found out all this information and I'm just like mate god is good man like do you know what I mean because I've been it's kind of like I've been able to put the pieces of the puzzle together after, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I truly believe in karma. But yeah, when um, when they when we got him sent down, obviously the sad thing was was that he got eight and a half years and then got out in four, um, which makes me just be so mad at the criminal justice system because yeah. my friend, my best friend, yeah, like she got put in prison for a text message and served half of the sentence that like he, he like what he did, like and what and he's selling, raping, abusing, like, oh babe, the things like it's just it's indescribable anyway. And um he's a very evil person and the fact that he's now walking the streets is the thing that bothers me the most. Are you scared? Not for me. I ain't scared, like, oh, fucking, I, I'm not that person anymore. Do you know what I mean, babe? Mm. I obviously have PTSD and I check my doors every night and, you know, I'm battling with my own demons in my head um, because sometimes I hear him telling me I'm a piece of shit and stuff, do you know what I mean? But hell or high water, am I scared of him anymore? Like, he can come in my face all he wants. The thing I'm scared of is other other vulnerable people because he, is, he ain't changed babe four years on good behavior he was manipulating people in there as well mate i'm telling you what like jail was in 
I don't actually know. This is the well, thing. Like he could have been. Anyway. I know exactly. So he could have been in Winston Green because it was in Birmingham. Do you know what I mean? Oh. But I actually don't know because they what the. Um, my uh, uh, police officer, support officer, like she's not even allowed to tell me where he is now. Um, Why? I'm a victim Should support you not be officer. Should giving a heads up, man, where they are? I've got a restraining order on him, so he's not allowed so much radius in, in regards to where I live and stuff like that. But no, you are right. Like, I, but sometimes I feel like if I knew, would that give me anxiety? Would I want to go and get him done in? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, would I be a better per Would I be um, as bad as him if I did these things? You know what I mean? Like, I've had so many people say, Sam, let me saw him out. And I'm just yeah. like, I don't, I'm really only here now to prevent this for, the, for anyone else. Because babe, the thing of the matter is, is that we all want to be accepted. We all want to be loved and we can all be vulnerable, you know, and there is- I'm still is... vulnerable. I'm in a strong place and a great place, but I still get vulnerable. I still yeah. get insecure. I still wary of things. Like... You want to be loved, innit, babe? Yeah, like, of course, of everybody us. wants to be accepted and loved, but we don't get it the way we should. Yeah. Because we don't love ourselves enough. Exactly, babe. And this is what I'm, this, th this is why I'm not scared for me because I've got yeah. to a place now where I, I love myself enough to know that I, I only do things that I, I, I like, you know, I'm trying to drop everything that doesn't serve me. Like, last year I dropped my coke addiction from when I was 17. I do you know, know what I mean? But I know, babe, it took me a long time. It's a working process. I know. And I still have my things now. I spoke to you about like, I still th have things now. Like I still, you know, have destructive habits and I, I'm working my way out of them but that is all down to the fact that I, I have self-worth now I have self-love and most of all like I see my greatest self then I never fucking clue babe do you know what I mean and um I just need people to know that people like this exist like I did not know I knew that there was evil people but fuck me the evil like what about the satanic shit that people don't really believe what kind yeah. of stuff was involved in there so this is the whole thing like of him like so he used to like say about the um, the new world order a lot um, the revelations a lot like he used to call me Mary Magdalene and all this definitely wasn't an Illuminati for staying in a high rise flats he was just uh, some fantasist was, yeah, and illusionist exactly. like He's a psycho. This he's just is what a I'm psychopath. Saying. Has manipulated the masses because he's vulnerable. But you look at all your serial killers. You look at all the fucking the mass manipulators come the across. Mass. Nice, loving, caring to get what they want, and then bang, Massive. snap, and then it's just break everybody down, peel them back, and then feed them the seeds that they want to feed them. Oh, he's definitely a psycho, babe. Like without a doubt, like, you don't you don't make moves like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like you don't punch someone in the face and then they see a bit of blood and like lick it. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't you don't speak in tongue and like you don't. Um, but but speaking tongue, like what double Dutch? Like fucking like kind of weird. Yeah, like, that like, weird dialect, babe. Uh -huh. Like 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 Satan talk. Like if you like, um, devil like voodoo shit, babe. Like literally, like literally voodoo. Like there was no pentagrams. I never seen no kids sacrificed. Anything like that. He always used to talk about tunnels in Wales that he would take us if, and jack us up on heroin if we was, you know, not, if we was too bad. Again, it's a fear tactic. I never Just, seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what these people do though, babe. So in regards to the satanic ritual abuse, it was a case of um, him constantly telling us he was Lucifer, doing everything in the name of he his God. He probably did believe that though. Yeah, babe, Because definitely. those people do follow that. And obviously with the SRA, that's what they, they, yeah. they, they, um, they practice Satanism. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think it was the whole branding thing and then the whole, um, everything, babe, like every, every bit of darkness that he did. Um, I, you know, I just remember like there were certain times when he would beat the shit out of me and then another girl in front of each other and then to be like this is in the name of lucifer do you know what i mean and then like just just mad stuff where everything was in the name of evil do you know what i mean he used to be like what's evil backwards sam live what's the devil backwards lived who do you think you're living for like do you know what i mean and just like using all of all of that dark i guess like fear manipulation techniques but using it in in the way there was another sort of a weird thing as well what he did he made me watch the olympics like he was very adamant that i had to watch the 2012 olympics like and obviously like when you look back at that now it is a bit of a ritual there was a, like a, a, a um there was like a witch there and everything it was all a bit weird do you know what i mean but there was just very weird stuff like that that he would go on and he would make sure like and everyone he he ever got close to he would say you know i'm the devil and i own your soul you do as i say and yeah just like using all of them kind of i guess it was just abuse babe really but yeah. done in the name of a, the devil yeah. like do you know what he's i mean like, to put a name, it, because he's a fucking nutcase that yeah massively just, um, 
just a fucking idiot, man. Like a bad, bad bastard. Like he'll Psycho. get his, he'll get his worth. Like, yeah, babe. And I believe now. And if you were to do anything that like, we could sit here and go, do you know what? I'm just going to get a shotgun and just blow his fucking head off. Like, but again, Make you're him no live different. It out, man. Yeah, you're no, like, you yeah. become no different. For you to try to shed light, for you to come forward and speak your truth, which is a beautiful thing. You are a beautiful person, a beautiful soul. Yes, mm. you are a little fucked up, but we all are. No matter if you went through the life you went, I know people who live a normal life but are still fucked up. Know, like, babe, that's just, what I mean. <laughs> there's no um, manual to then say that this is how it should be done. We all go through life for a purpose, but yeah, I don't babe. know what the purpose is. Some people struggle more than most. Some people. It's just the way it is. We're just putting this platform to then try and make changes to better ourselves today and try and help others because a lot yeah, of people babe. do struggle and that's the fucking sad thing. How were you feeling when you got your sentence? Were you happy or were you thinking you should have got life? I I was, I was, I was, it was bittersweet because obviously like he didn't get found guilty of the rape and stuff. And obviously like it's quite hard nowadays to get found guilty of a rape. You have to go and swab yourself after you've had something happen to you and uh, any rape victim will tell you, survivor, sorry, will tell you that that isn't the case. That's not what you do, you know? And um, most of the time it's your word against theirs, which is sad um, because, you know, the th- the heinous things that he did there, um, what did they get charged with and end up? Um, so it was a, for a, pr- a prostitution, forced prostitution, financial gain. So basically human trafficking. Um, and if it was, of, like I say, it was for me and the minor. Um, and the judge tried, the, the judge was really good. Like um, he, she, he cautioned the police lady who was, um, you know, because she was like huffing and everything and yawning through that young girl's interview. What? Like, it, babe, it was, it was honestly like, it was heart wrenching, like heart wrenching, like to hear when that girl was talking and you just, you know, you can just fucking, she was a woman as well. And it's like, come on, man. Like, but anyway, the judge was good and he gave him the heart hardest sentence that he could because there was um obviously like uh with um the jury like there was one person that said oh we don't think that he's raped him like which is fucking bullshit because usually if it's if they find you guilty of one that's one with the court case when we got the letter it was um they were quite apologetic in the letter and saying we're really sorry because usually if we find him guilty of one thing he gets found guilty of all the rest but i'm just glad we got a conviction babe because the thing of the matter is is that i i tell my story and then there's people out there that are denying that this happens, denying that this stuff's real. Um, and I'm just like, uh, w- what? Like, you know, there's people like India Oxenberg, Annika Lucas out there, they're trying so hard. And like, they have links to the government and they have links to the Dalai Lama. Do you know what I mean? Like Nixium, like, and this is what I'm saying. Like, when you do look at cults as well, like he might not have been part of the Illuminati, but he knew cult processes. And like you said, that you can look up this stuff like on the internet if you wanted to. But it's always a very, um, it's always a prevalent male character. So if you look at um, Nixium, if you look at Jim Jones, if you look at um, any of the cults, there's usually a prominent male feature and that was him. He was the hub, that's what he called himself. And it's sad because like all of the, us are trying to talk and I've, I've interviewed India and Annika and, um, sorry, not India and um, not Annika yet, but India, they've had people like who are still sticking up for Keith Ramey. And Keith Ramey is a sick fuck, babe. Like, do you know what I mean? But you will still get people out there that are dismissing this stuff. Like, she got branded, like, Annika was saying, when I come on the interview, Sam, I need to talk about satanic ritual abuse and saying, why are people dismissing this? Like, do you know what I mean? You don't have to see, a, a, the, the, like, the kids to get sacrificed. These psychos think they're the devil, babe. Like, and that's what we need to get across. Like, they're not like me and you. Like, they, they're, they're fucking sick, mate. There's a part of their brain that isn't right. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So... When he got the sentence, like, I was happy because it was a sentence. Um, and I kind of started to find a bit of power then as well. Um, Get your strength back. Yeah, and at the time, I had found a power um, by fighting for human rights because at the time, I was working for the biggest human rights organisation in the world. Started to volunteer for, like, things like women's aid and stuff. And um, started to go into the schools, volunteering. And I think that's when I realised... I needed to do something because the young girls, I seen me and I got scared. I seen them, the skirts were short. Like, you know, the mums, I had a mum message me the other day and she was like, Sam, I can't find a knee length skirt for my girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, and I, um, 
I guess that was um, when he got put inside. I think I started to heal, um, but I think I start. This has been like a nine-year healing process anyway for me, babe. Because when I met my missus, I guess I started to realize what love was, and like you say, the frequency changed within me. And um, yeah, it was a, a whole nine years have got me where I am now. But I guess when he got put inside, that was when I found my voice. I kind of cleared my throat chakra a bit. When did it get put in? Um, I'm trying to think what year it was. I think it was 2012. What year are we in now? Yeah, yeah so nine, ten years. Nine yeah, year. yeah, yeah. So see when you, you young girls with skirts and makeup and that, and then you look at the Muslim wives and the Muslim girls who just wear... Yeah, just I couldn't wear, I wear, fucking wear, understand it now, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I still some don't beliefs think... are different, but the westernised, like the young girls here, man, like... It's fucked up, man. Scary. It's fucked up. Even the boys now, man, like, it, it goes both ways. Like, there's a lot of predators out there for young kids, young Babe, boys, man. The chemtrails, like, the, yeah. the, the criminal, the criminal um, exploitation that's happening now. Like, sexual exploitation happens to boys as well. There's, like, these chem parties now and everything where um, young boys are getting taken to these gay parties, you know, and abused there. Um, high, they drug them and stuff. But there's also criminal exploitation, babe. And you think about knife crimes, county lines. Like, I'm looking at these young boys. And I remember when I was in school, my best mate was shot in weed, 15 years old. I'm walking around with him like this who the fuck's selling that boy ounces of dr ounces of weed mm -hmm. who is it because i'm telling you if the boy loses the drugs what you're gonna beat the 15 year old up because they will and then this is the thing like the the, the system isn't giving them like school babe they're teaching them pythagoras theory mate the same thing my our mums and dads were learning like the kids the, they're longing for opportunity they're longing for like getting out there do you know what i mean like yeah. let's face it drug Creativity dealers and individuality you want to create you, everybody's you look at everybody to wear the same clothes as well. Reason being yeah. because you're conditioned to wear the same clothes at school. Everybody's got the same uniform on. So if you wear something different from somebody else, wow. you don't feel part of it. You think, oh, something's tribal missing. So the tribalism, we'll dress the same, we'll feel good. But so that's why this, in the, the school, they use the left side, which is uh, your memorization, your yeah, right babe. side is the creativity and your individuality. So it's to open your mind. That Sometimes I'll wear something, I think, nah, I'll get slagged for that. And then you, you start thinking, fuck everybody else. Fuck it, babe. Yeah. This is, and this is what I think that's where I, what I did, like with my, um, when I started speaking for my story. So when I first started telling my story about five, six years ago, that's when I realized that I, you know, I, when he got put inside, I started saying it. And I was, I realized that people didn't really know about human trafficking then. Do you know what I mean? Like we didn't know about Epstein. We didn't know about Nixium. No one really knew about stuff. And, I guess when I started to speak, I realized that this was a bit more common than what people thought it was. And then I obviously started to look into things. And um, I just really, I guess, put, wanted to put purpose to my pain, babe. I, did, I, w I didn't want to live in that horrible place anymore. And when I started to do things to serve other people, that was when I, I guess I, I found more love for myself I, I found a purpose do you know what I mean like and I I started stepping into that and I think when we can wake up in purpose is when we can find a reason to live and that's what I found and I was like oh my god and obviously then I was having Ma around me see with your partner were you always bisexual was it no yeah or, I was always I've always just because of what you've been through with men you've done fuck that I'm not going there no again. I've always liked girls babe like yeah. even when I was in school do you know what I mean like I used to um Feel I just safer. got caught a lesbian in school. <laughs> feel safer as well. I don't know, babe. I think some like it's not even that. Like, cause um, there's some good guys out there. Do you know what I mean? Oh, thank I, you. <laughs> I love you. And um, you know, there really is, and I think um, just because there's bad guys, like it doesn't mean that they're all tarred with the same brush. And I think. Um, for me, I fall. I fell in love with the person. Like it wasn't that she it was a gender. It was because of her morals. It was because of who she was as a person. It was because of her serving of shit and actually her turning out to be a better person. Do you know what I mean? Like I care about what happens to people and who do you turn into. And I realised that when I met Ma, and that's when I started to realise that I was more attracted to her soul. Like I was more attracted to the fact that she would help the old lady across the road instead of robbing her bags. Do you know what I mean? And I started to realise about. I, I like people that, that want to help. You know what I mean? I like good people. Like, and um, she's fit as fuck as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, it's always a bonus yeah. of that. 
<laughs> it literally yeah. really was and she's stunning but she it was she was a stunning person babe do you know what I mean like everything that she did made me want to be a better person as well and I guess when I had that around me I started to become better and I liked that you know what I mean like I wanted I wanted more of that and um when she loved me I realized I must be something special and I liked that and I wanted to keep that forever and every day she still makes me feel like that. So I'm just so blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, but she also supports me, like, do you know what I mean? Like, she never judged me. Like that's, she, that, that's the most important thing, man, especially if you're coming with all that fucking Babe, I was literally pain, like, like, like... That can absorb so much energy that like, for somebody to absorb that, man, that's a strong fucking woman. I know, babe. And you know if you think I mean? about it, I, was, I had a relationship with her through Skype. I was yeah. being pimped out while she was still with me she was still like even when I stopped um like when I got away from him I was still um I ended up doing this bloody BBC documentary and everything on um on a webcam in I still thought that what I was doing was normal I even went back to brassing because of the five grand coke bill you know and all of the debt and stuff like that um and I I went back to that but with Ma things started to become like clearer of um my worth like I was like well if I've got a woman like this I don't want to share her in it this is hers like this belongs to her I don't want anyone else touching this do you know what I mean and then I started to realize one minute why am I doing it for my I want to do that for myself do you know yeah. what I mean and I guess I kind of to step up um but it really was like my job more than anything babe like when I ended up like working for Amnesty International and then you know I started to um just start to realise that I could prevent this from happening and, you know, started to stop things like child marriage and FGM and I I, I realised that I'd had my human rights taken away from me. That was when I started to feel powerful because I I realised that once you have this knowledge, you can protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I had that, I was like, right, I can pass this on to other people. Um, And then I just started to go all in, started lobbying the government and everything, didn't I? And then I started to realize about the corruption in the government. And then I was like, mate, this whole world is set up for us to fail. Like, and I just, I guess I wanted to use my voice for the good. So I started to become a public speaker. And then um, I got into personal development. And I think when I got into personal development was when I started to realize wow, like our brains are so powerful. And um, that was the whole reason what happened to me is because I wasn't in control of my brain. So I really started to like delve deep, um, started to, you know, look up uh, people like um, Eric Thomas and Les Brown. And then I realized they had come from, um, they had come from adversity, you know, um, Les Brown born in an abandoned building, Mm -hmm. labeled the educate, like the dumb twin, like, do you know what I mean? And um, Eric Thomas um, being homeless at 16 and then taking 12 years to get a degree, like, and and looking at these people, I was like, um, there was a a lady called Immaculate Illibigiza I looked up and she had um, had her family slaughtered in front of her in the Hutus and the Tutsis, um, the Rwanda genocide. And she was teaching about forgiveness. And um, that was when I realized I had to do all of that stuff, babe. Yeah. I had to do all the inner work. And it, rewire on your brain. Yeah, rewire babe. Rewire your brain to think differently, feel differently, and it can be see done. It, yeah, see it all differently. And, mm-hmm. and I think it helped because like me and Mara did the same thing. You know, we got on our personal development together. Um, and then she started to, um, when she started to get into her fitness, so did I. And um, I think like I was saying to you, the soil that you're planted in, I had replanted myself into some better soil. And, um, you know, my missus is amazing. She's a GB athlete. And and to be around that kind of drive and that kind of um, like strength, it made me realize that was all in me. And then I stepped up, but in my way. And that's when I... um, I started to create Diamond Dew projects and um, my own charity so that I could... Like, what are these projects? So for people watching... The oh, Diamond better. Dew projects. Yeah. So it's my charity. So what we do is we go into um, the, the youth and the criminal justice sector and we um, prevent exploitation and improve mental well-being. So anything from teaching the parents about online grooming uh, to the ki- to the teaching the children about um, confidence levels, um, mind management... But then um, I want to start going into prisons as well to do the exact same thing. And I'm um, not going to lie, babe, it's beautiful, man. Like, we've been able to work with some councils. Um, I've been now working with the NHS. 
Um, I'm mentoring my first young person for Sheffield Council on Wednesday. Um, and I guess for me, like, the fact that I am being seen as, as a person that can help like that, it really helps me, babe. Like, it helps me to heal. It helps me to know that I'm helping people. And now I dedicate my life really to the same thing you do, like, just making sure that I can become my best self and also help others to do the same you know like I just want to be that that voice for the voiceless like I know that babe listen like everyone who was in that that predicament with me they won't talk and that's okay like no one has to tell their story I just want people to know that they're survivors you know and that's what I've rewired my brain to realize that I'm not a victim I'm a survivor and I think when you think a certain way you act differently as well so now it's it's all systems go babe do you know what I mean like I'm I'm here for the change mate I'm here for the real the real good good and um not just that like I help I want to help people to achieve optimal health you know I, I look into things like superfoods now I um I, I make sure that I am doing things where I'm looking after my mind you know meditation mindfulness uh grounding um you know I've bloody had nine years of therapy and I just I want people to understand that when um, you go through something in life it doesn't define you you know um you can be crushed like a piece of coal or you can be made into the diamond that you are yeah. diamonds are made under pressure I know, you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean. how's the therapy helped with you oh therapy's been the best thing ever babe I couldn't I, I I really hope that anyone that's listening and if they are in a bad place and they're thinking that therapy is like some pussy thing like they need to realize it's the best thing you can do and I think especially as for men as well I mean because men are told not to speak aren't you like you're told like don't cry you know man up and all this but from any kind of perspective male or female therapy because it's coming from someone who's not emotionally attached to you and they can see everything from an outsider's perspective um I was lucky enough to use crisis and women's aid and um it's, it's the most healing thing you can do. Like I, I went all the way back to my timeline and I this is how I understood that this had all stemmed from my childhood. Do you know what I mean? And, and it kind of breaks things down so that you realize that you're not to blame because I think when we can go through bad things in life, we can blame ourselves. I mean, I'm still working on the guilt, you know, and I... I, I, I lived in shame for a long time and I think now I've kind of got out of that because I'm not ashamed to tell my story anymore. I didn't, I didn't want to tell people about, you know, certain things that had happened to me. But then I was like, do you know what, fuck it. Like if people want, people want to judge me if I work at Tesco, so fuck it, I'm going to have to say this anyway, just so that people know, you know, fuck the shame, fuck the guilt. Like what's it got, What that is not serving me because it's, it's stopping me from from speaking my truth you know and anyone who's been for abuse they're not they they don't have to be shameful like what happened to us isn't our fault and I think when I went to therapy that's the biggest thing that I realized that what happened to me wasn't my fault it could they they were going to do that anyway they're perpetrators and perpetrators are, it doesn't matter who you are if you're vulnerable you're in the firing line and that made me realize that it wasn't it wasn't personal it was just i was in the wrong place at the wrong time and um that i can accept that i'm not that person anymore and realize about uh, it was just a, like i guess an unpackaging of realizing why what happened happened and I would say to anyone who has been through any kind of abuse, I actually think even if you've not been abused, you should have therapy. Like, I feel like it should be a free for all. And I feel like it should be more readily available. And I think more than ever, we should have it for, for children because if we can stop it before it gets that far, mm -hmm. you know, all, all anyone wants to do is be listened to, babe. Do you know what I mean? Like, and we all deserve to be listened to. Like, no one's story is any, any, any worse or not worse than anyone else's. Like, everyone deserves to know that they matter. And I think in therapy, if you... I mean, I got a really good therapist. I've had, I've had a few good therapists. And uh, one of them was actually um, a specialist with cults and SRA. So she did a lot of the CBT therapy with me and stuff like that. And... Um, yeah, I even still now, babe, like I, I still, I, I, I want to still have therapy now because even still now I struggle, you Is that know. your medicine? Yeah, like, and I think, I think um, talking is a big thing, you mm. know, and I've got a really tight circle now and 
my circle we tell each other everything you know we are we know about all of our traumas and all of our things that have happened and and it's it's a, a no judgment zone and I think that's what therapy is as well yeah that's because you don't want to judge anybody because we're all going through our own fucking know, misery babe. man like for anybody watching Sammy like that's maybe caught up in a abusive relationship maybe yeah. not necessarily trafficking but like you say we're all battling some sort of madness what advice would you give for those who are maybe too scared to leave too scared to leave. I, I, uh, the only advice I can give is is to know that your worth is is so much more than that, and to know that like. You don't need to depend on anyone but yourself. You hold the power within you, to step up and realize that you you are great. Like, do you know what I mean? Like your your greatness is defined by you, and I feel like. Once you can tap into your greatness and your worth, you realise everything that isn't there that is kind of congruent with that. Um, but also I want people to know that um, you're stronger than what you think because I feel like a lot of people that can't walk away, they think they're weak and they think they need to depend on that person like with the whole Stockholm Syndrome thing. But anyone who has who has, has has endured any kind of abuse is 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 a strong motherfucker. Do you know what I mean? Like they, we are strong. Like, and I think all they need to know is that they can depend on themselves, and what that other person is saying about them is not true. And they need to be their biggest cheerleader. We need to be our biggest cheerleaders in this world, and we need to make sure that the voice in our head is our best friend. And then no other motherfucker's going to be able to get in there. Exactly, babe. Yeah. How do you, speaking about this kind of stuff, man, that the people are weird. How do you deal? With, how do you deal with the trolls? Oh my god! How do you deal with the trolls? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, you just get stronger. You become immune to it. I know. It, man. I know. You shouldn't become. You shouldn't have to become immune to it. But remember, whether people talk positive or negative towards me, it sends traffic towards my channel. I, I make love money off that. that. Yes, uh, that people are making me know? money. Babe, that's so true, right? So there's a guy called Michael Beckwith and he turned around and he said, um, he's a personal development guy and he was like, all I say now is thank you. Like, yeah. he was like, if it's good or bad, I just say thank you because I'm not emotionally attached to what other people say. Mm -hmm. But it has been, it, I guess it was hard at the start because I got um, attacked by a few people who... Um, have been abused themselves, you know? They've, I've had people call me some horrible names, like say, oh, I'm a trafficker and all this. I'm just like, mate, are you okay? Like, come on. Like, seriously, if you knew about human trafficking, what a Sudanese effect was, you would know that I would be in prison if that was the case. And also like, it's just sad because I think most of the people that are trolls are the people that have actually been abused themselves as well. And it's kind of like they're taking their shit out on you. Triggers them. Yeah. And I think this is the thing that I've noticed because I talk about a lot of things that I guess people don't want to talk about because I don't follow certain movements and stuff like that. Um, I trigger a lot of people. Um, and, and also if I speak about the adult industry, Jesus, <laughs> I've had a few triggered men and women on me. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm here just to expose the truth, you know. But I guess if people haven't dealt with their darkness and that's because I've only just started speaking recently about these things. I guess I, it's all a bit new to me. So I, at the start, was like, fuck you, you motherfucker, the fuck I found your IP address, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And now I'm just like, do you know what? Like, I know you're damaged. So all I want to do is send you healing. But obviously, like, some people say some awful things, babe, but then I realise they're eggs, like, they're not even, like, real accounts and shit. So I'm yeah. like, mate, come then, like. Do you know what? Like, we're all here with stories, like, and that's the thing. Like, And the worst thing is, is that the, some of the trolls that I've had have actually been through their own abuse, you know? And that's when I realised that they were damaged. And I realised, like, the, some of the um, trolls, they were... Um, you know, child abuse victims themselves. And I I keep saying to people like, listen, I, I know that I was 16 when what happened to me. That's why I do this because I'm fully aware there's there's people that are younger than me that, that are going through that. So like, I need to do this, do you know what I mean? So if people see that as like, I'm doing this for any other reason apart from that, then that is their perception. And I think, you know, I'm still learning and I'm still growing and I'm still healing so that I'm starting to realise, I mean, I'm a mank, so at first I was biting back and like, fuck off, like, yeah, but yeah, now yeah. I'm just like, I send you love, babe, like, do you know what I mean? And I wish you healing because at the end of the day, like, my, my energy matters and it's like, if anyone can control your brain, they've won, you know? And that's what I'm trying to get out of now is people being able to control my emotions, control... Um, 
my mind but I guess when I first started talking because they were attacking my trauma and had never spoken about that stuff I was like the fuck are you mate but now as time's gone on I mean it's been a year now I've been speaking about this and I think the more that I, I step up, like you say, like I, I'm go, I'm, I, w- I want to go all the way to the top with this as well. Like I'm not going to shut up for no one. Like mm-hmm. this is, this is something that I'm going to take all the way. I want to get laws changed, babe. Do you know what I mean? Like I want to be on stages around the world. Like, and I want to make sure that I just give people hope to never give up. Because honestly, if I can, if I can be successful, anyone can. <laughs> like I'm mm-hmm. telling you, and that is what I want people to understand. Like it's society that's fucking us up. It's Babylonia that's breaking us down. Like it's not all. Us. like the, the people want want love they want freedom leave leave us alone do you know what I mean like but like I reckon now hopefully I'm a big believer in the age of Aquarius and where we're going in this world right now in the conscious collective and I think that's why a lot of people are kind of waking up to the things we talk about now being controlled by the adult industry being controlled by um you know uh, drugs and and being controlled by a system that doesn't serve us anymore having detrimental thoughts buying a watch because you think that that, yeah, that yeah. person needs to make you know that you need to yeah they're like being you controlled said. by social media as well oh this is the one I'm, I'm consumed by it just now I'm telling you are they in my phone I know, babe. And I think when we do what we do, like we have to be honest with ourselves and just be like, yo, like we have our own issues. Like I Mm. have, I still, you know, I still, I smoke a bit of weed every now and Mm. then to calm me down. Like, and I've had this conversation with you and I'm not even going to lie, babe. I had that conversation. It was the most, one of the most enlightening things that's happened to me recently. And I was like, do you know what? Like for me to become my best self, like I want to show people. And the only way you can show that is like you said, by leading by example, like that's my thing for you now, babe, leading by example. And that is what I want to do for my kids. Like that is what I want to do to make sure that, I guess my mom and dad were amazing, but I don't want them to be brought up in that toxicity. And in order to do that, is to heal myself, you know? Yeah, but you're doing it, man. You're a work in process. What you've came from to what you're doing now is unbelievable. Should Honestly, be smashing in it, shouldn't uh, we, yeah. babe? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. That I know how emotional you can get because it is that shit. You're bringing up all that emotion. But it's a little healing process as well. Like, yeah, we're always constantly learning. We're always constantly growing. People take inspiration from this. And this is what it's all about, too. Sometimes we've got to go through the pain and the darkness to then push through, find the light, and then we can guide other people out of darkness. Like, sometimes we're the pawns in the game, whatever God yeah, has put in place for us, like the misery God's of darkness. God's game, like, though, innit? Not their game. Yeah, like, we've just got to be blessed that we can research and educate ourselves, but we're still human, we still make mistakes. I still think, I still think about, I'd kill that cunt. I still think about fucking going tonto, man. I think about going nuts and just going, fuck this. I know, I'll sometimes. get him and I'll get him. Is that right? And then you think, fuck that, man. It's the easy way out, babe, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, let him live out well. his shit, man. Let him live out his yeah. karma. Like, let mm-hmm. everyone live out their karma, including us, because I know that my karma, like, all of this is happening now for me because of the person that I've become. Like, I should be slicing people's heads off, babe. Like, I'm sorry, but the only person that gets abuse is my missus, and I feel for her sometimes because mm-hmm. she's had to go through that process with me. But, you know, she's an amazing person, but hell, I, I ain't fucking going around hurting other people. Like, And I certainly would never, I don't even want to hurt Steve. Do you know, I've got to a point in my life now, like, so obviously I've forgiven him, but I'm getting to a point now where I want to send him love because that's going to hurt the most, babe, because he's going to know then that it's, he's never going to win. He's never going to win and I'm not there yet. No way am I because still, I still think of like, oh. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? But I, have, I, I haven't done them things. I haven't acted on them things, you know? If anything, I've just hurt my bloody self by doing destructive habits you know it happens um, man it happens to the best of us but at least you're being aware of it you're taking control of it and the most important thing is you're taking responsibility of it you always. don't need to live there you don't need to settle there les brown will say it but people's opinion doesn't have to be a reality people can say what they want they can do what they want it's all external it's all outside noise don't mean fuck all you're, yeah, gonna, you're not going to harm me i'm doing what i'm doing you're doing what you're doing as long as we can learn and grow and doing it for the right reasons keep your side of the road clean because every time you level up, becomes a new wave of hate. So true, New wave babe. of hate, and then more people, and you think, fuck me, where'd that come from? And then you think, okay, yeah, I'm doing well for myself. You don't get that hate unless you're doing well. So true, yeah. and I think that that's what we need to realise as well. Like, it's like, as we're stepping up in the game, like, there's going to be more people, but I think real recognises real, so the people that have done the work, like, I think personally, like, it's like 98% good, 2% bad, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. But I guess we always focus on the 2%, because we're like, why don't you love me? Of course, because that's just <laughs> 
they abandon issues. Yeah, down. that's so exactly everyone, what it is. Everybody loves but unity, you understand. Everybody's raised differently. Everybody sees the world differently. Everybody's different skin colours, different religions, yeah, different cultures, beliefs, eat lot. differently. It's just so many, div- it's divide and conquer, but as long that's as you stay true insane. to you, and you break it all down, take all that shit away, we're just all beings, man. We're just all going through a wee journey, not knowing the what the fuck's going on, do you know what I mean? Babe, would you like to finish up on anything? Um, I just guess I would like to finish on just getting people to understand about seeing themselves in a different light. So I just want everyone to know that whoever has been through anything in their lives, see yourself as that survivor. Because when you see yourself as a victim, you act like one. I want people to know that no matter what they've been through, they're a survivor of what they've been through and they've survived for a reason. And I think when you can have that mindset, you start to step up into your purpose. And I think if we had a world full of people in purpose, the world would be a better place and I just want people to realise their greatness just like us, babe. Like, it's a great place to be, you know? Um, And I also want people to realise that they are censoring certain things for a reason, you know, in regards to the the hashtag save our children. So I want to keep that, that, that narrative continuing we need to stand up for the children we need to save our children and the only way we can do that is by stepping up ourselves thank you babe. God, really. <laughs> Sammy, listen, it's been an you. absolute pleasure i love you but <laughs> keep you, doing babe. what you're doing keep working on yourself and just shoot for the stars <laughs> god bless you Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.